back, everybody. A little progress being made. Just wanted to share uh, this little project. I've kind of been meaning to check off the list in reference to the back body uh, back body mounts, the access port. Uh, let me show you what I'm talking about. All right, so this opening is like two inches by three or four inches from the factory. The guy I bought it from had hacked this thing open with a sawzall so he could fit his hand in it. And uh, I ended up um, just embracing that idea and created this uh, panel. So I had some scrap aluminum. Boom. There it is installed. I know it's, it's the details for me. It's like... <clears throat> Not that I ever want to take that thing off again, but uh, if I do, there's going to be some reasonable area to work. So check that off the list. All right, another small project. Just trying to take care of before I glue these fenders on, checking them off the list. So I've decided to delete the big access hole for the factory air. And I'm going to put in a little small bulkhead for heater hoses, pretty common in these builds, but uh, let me show you what it looks like finished. I think it, uh, it's a nice little addition. So there you go, nice and tucked away. Very easy to install if you don't have any fenders on the car. Uh, something important, I went ahead and cut this, uh, this vent assembly out. This Kind of got rid of it uh, so I can run hoses and, and all that jazz through there. Um, and then, of course, I'll have some access. Sorry. But uh, that's it. Easy, easy, lemon squeezy. Okay, today is the day. I've got this beautiful, I, I can't imagine it not being 60 degrees right now. Um, either way, it's beautiful out totally lucked out kids are home from school because of some technology issue or so anyways i gotta put these fenders on i got it out in the garage i got everything i need i got three uh tubes of my panel bond i've already gone through three just in the little things that i've done so i'm just praying that i can get it all done with those three so let's uh let's give it a rip see how it goes so I think it's probably worth saying that I've had these things on and off probably at least three times. Um, they come as a full quarter, all four corners, they come as full fenders. So you trim to fit the way you want them to fit or the way you want to install them. There's no necessarily right or wrong way. Um, you certainly want to use the bonding strips that are currently on the car and, um, and then you'll I made a vertical bonding strip right behind the, uh, the wheel well. So um, <clears throat> I'm just trying to find fitment. The car is leveled and set up. So to be able to get this where I want it, that's really important, right? So right height set, uh, everything's trimmed back to where I can set this flush and uh, put it where I want it to uh, stay for good. So making sure the wheel's centered in the opening, make sure that the, um, the body lines meet there in the middle of the door, make sure that there's no obstruction at the bottom of the fender there, at the uh, rocker, uh, so on and so forth. Kind of look at how I want to fasten it and uh, kind of get this process in my head as to how I'm gonna install it. So the whole time I'm applying the panel bond, I'm trying to keep in mind the contact patch. <clears throat> and you really need to look at the back of the fender because the contour on these flares starts immediately off of that jam, the door jam panel bond area. So you're like making sure, A, that the area that is gonna contact is solid and that there's no voids in the material. And B, when everything's said and done, pulling the wheel off, inspecting those contact areas and i'll probably end up backfilling because that area on the original fender had probably an inch and a half two inches of panel bond and material backfilling so uh, something to keep in mind uh, you're going to go through a lot of material as far as panel bonds concerned 
And um, again, do your prep. Make sure you're not dropping stuff all over the wheels and your tires. Like this is not a good example of how to do this in reference to prep. Like <laughs> I'm in a hurry and impatient and uh, I've got a little window of opportunity here. And so that's how I roll. Um, this is me filling the jam at the door. And uh, there's a lot of material there, which I'll discuss here in a minute. So one down. So here I'm essentially making sure that I'm putting the panel in the same place as the other one is. So right now I'm just checking my dimensions, making sure that they match that top of the fender to the top of the lip to make sure aesthetically this thing's in, you know, pretty damn close to being the same place as the other one. I'm trying to eliminate as much body work as I can, which is kind of a moot point just because these fenders aren't the exact same thickness as the original so that body line at the bonding strip is going to get worked and then the jam i'm just trying to create the best uh the best look on the wheel and i can trim up that jam inevitably um you know once everything's said and done another big piece here is to make sure that your doors are where they're going to live right make sure that they're hitting your strike and they're latching correctly and that you know you've done the best to line those doors so that you don't have to you know get the cart before, so you don't get the cart before the horse right that's there's just some things that need to be done before um you start putting on fixed panels so a lot of holes Sorry, I forgot to put on the uh, camera. <laughs> and like, so I can actually see daylight. Fact, the uh, if you have a C3, I'd. There was a lot of material materials. in here. These fenders I overlap. Took the original this jam fenders off, and, and the, the whole material I kind of see here, maybe. But this was bond. all backfilled with glue, almost like someone took a fat finger and just fingered it off and was done. So Probably not going to be quite that. All right. So the challenge is obviously to get the wheel centered in the opening, which right now, I mean, it doesn't have to be 100% perfect when it's just being held on by one screw. But the idea, regardless, is to have it look the same on both sides and it's got a lot of negative caster okay so naturally the wheel is pushed back in the OEM opening so how much I'm kind of well, in great mare fashion my work. so camera um, phone died and this has been uh, an absolute process sunlight. to try to figure this out a light I've cut and fit this thing at least so twice. they're on and now I have looking to at that front fender going, time. Todd, what the hell? Look, that's inexperience and impatience. Like, I'm going to have to work for that one. So stick around and see how that turns out. Uh, and as good as this might look from a wheel opening standpoint, the wheels hit the front and back, which is unfortunate. I could lower the car quite a bit and probably get close clearance, but... I don't want my car sitting that low. I 
Uh, but, I mean, wheel opening wise, pretty much dead nuts. I got 22 millimeters on, on the, you know, uh, either way, the, the dimension from the top of the fender to the wheel opening is, is where it's supposed to be. I'm tired. <laughs> this is, uh, kind of see, I tried the Klinkos and I just, I was impatient. Didn't make too much of a difference seeing how I was using zip screws. Um, so the only thing left, really left, that I have to do is get these uh, upper fenders glued in place. That one's just sitting there and it looks pretty decent the way it sits. I have to kind of bring this up. All right, well, that's it. Fenders are on. Openings dialed yeah, in. But you can see the hood. Anyways, Man, thanks for watching. If any of you guys ain't and, busy, come uh, on down, help me push this thing up the hill back in my garage. pretty damn good. Pretty stoked. 